here from D-Lab. In the shop today, I've got a really cool Fender Harbored amplifier. I believe it's 1956. Runs a pair of 6V6s. It arrived here in pieces. So I've got a project ahead of me. So before I turn it on, let me show you what I've found so far and what it's going to take to repair. Now first off, if you look at the chassis over here, you'll see that uh, output transformer. Well, that wasn't there when it arrived. Um, the transformer was actually loose when it came into the shop. And this is what was provided. It's an old uh, organ output transformer. Not the right one for the fender, but luckily for me, I had one sitting here. It dropped right into place like it was made for it. So here's the uh, cabinet. As you can see, she's a bit rough. Back panel's loose, but there is the original Jensen speaker, right there. And if you look down here, you can see the paperwork still attached. And this is serial number H-00132. Well, I've already replaced the handle. This was the one that was on. You can see she's pretty tore up. Luckily, they make these nice replacements. We'll start with the chassis. You can see all the tubes are in place. And they are old stock. And there's that serial number. Top side here has original power transformer. And of course, now we have a new output transformer. It's actually a vintage fender transformer. Luckily, I had one laying around here. The underside, it's already had the caps replaced. So you can see the line up there. And here's the loose wiring from the transformer that I'm gonna hook back up. I noticed over here that this capacitor is loose. Don't know what happened there. It looks like it was actually cut. And then the thing that I saw that kind of alarmed me is you look down here, probably kind of hard to see, but this resistor right here, this uh, 4.7K resistor you see, well, half of it's actually blown right out of the resistor. It's damaged, and according to the schematic, that's supposed to be a 470 ohm resistor, not a 4.7K. Other than that, she looks pretty darn good. Underside, the selenium rectifier is still there. We'll make sure that this thing biases up once I ever get her fired back up. First, the obvious. We'll go in there and uh, repair the power supply, get that 470 ohm resistor in there, take care of the leads on those caps that are cut, bust things out, make sure there's no other problems, wire up the new output transformer, and we'll bring her up slow on a Bariac, see if it comes to life. First, let's get rid of that uh, damaged resistor. I'll show you a little closer what's going on with her. So here she is, if you can see it. About a quarter of that resistor is missing. She really got blasted. It'd take a lot of current to take out a 4.7K resistor. So the new uh, transformer is wired in and I found a real vintage Allen Bradley 470 ohm resistor, 5% tolerance, carbon type. Put that in there too, to keep uh, some vintage appeal to the repair. So to fire this amp up, since I'm not really sure yet whether it's all fixed, I've got a test set up here and I'm gonna show you what I'm doing. And I highly recommend doing this for those unknowns that you may run across. So let me show you. So what I have here is a Beckman meter in current mode and it's actually wired in series with the high voltage. So I did not connect the red wire of the output transformer, it actually runs through this meter. So I can watch the plate current through the tubes. This meter here, I'm going to monitor the negative bias, make sure that's there and stable. And for the initial power up, I got a Bariac. So I'm going to bring her up slow and watch the current. And if we're lucky, you'll see a sine wave over here on the scope. So here we go, let me power it up. <clears throat> so I'm bringing up the Variac, about 50 volts. I'm not even watch the amperage. So there we are at 50. Let's go over here while I'm turning up and watch the current meter. So this is the plate current through both tubes. 
So I'm hoping to see something around 50 milliamps. And then here, according to the print, it should be about negative 27 volts. Now here comes the plate current. I'll take it right on up. Because so far the plate current looks good. Not seeing anything crazy. There's a negative bias. Everything's looking good, no smoke. Okay. Here we are, up to about full voltage. Getting closer. So you can see we're hovering around 20 mils. Negative 27 volts, just like the print says. So let's take a look at the scope and put a sine wave through it. I've let it sit here and bake for a while. You can see the tubes are lit up. Hanging around uh, negative 28 volts. About 44 mils, let's say. So that's 22 mils per tube. And let's go to the scope and we'll turn up the gain. There she is. So this thing's working. Sine wheel looks nice and clean. Super clean. I think we got her. Still monitoring the amp. Sitting there right around 44 mils. Great signal over here on the scope. So we've got good stable negative bias. So I'm going to go ahead and put her together, solder that last lead, and I'll put on a dummy load, let her bake for a little bit, make sure it's good to go. But so far it looks very promising. One thing I didn't mention on the test setup is I always use an 8 ohm non-inductive dummy load on the output of the amps when I'm checking for bias. Always make sure you got a dummy load or a speaker hooked up that's the right impedance or you can mess up that output transformer and you'll be taking it to me for repair. Taking a final look underside, give her a little inspection. You can see that nice Allen Bradley resistor I was telling you about. Transformers wired in, everything checks out. Controls are clean. So let's hook the speaker up and put a tone through her. Hey, so look here. I found a great use for that old organ transformer. A prop for testing amplifiers in the cabinets. What a deal, huh? Let's see what it sounds like. There she is. I'll vary the tone a little bit. So it sounds like that old Jensen is doing fine. Get her in the cabinet, and then we'll shoot another video of the Harvard in action. But I'm calling this one a success. So you might think, wow, you know, that's a lot of work to do to check out the amp. However, in this case, when this thing blew resistor in two, and at one time ate an output transformer, I wanted to make absolutely sure that I didn't have excessive plate current. And in this case, I don't. This thing's running like a dream. So anyway, I hope uh, you picked up some pointers here and tune into D-Lab for some more cool demos. Thanks for tuning in.